What up, John Morgan. So if you have somebody who you consider to be a hero, or even somebody who you're inspired by or you're impressed by, I want you to try on a possibility of what that actually means. What if when you see somebody and they inspire you or you're impressed by something or you see somebody and you consider them a hero, what if that's actually you seeing an unexpressed part of your own potential and just you're, you're projecting it onto them? It's just a reflection of a part of you that deep down on some level you know you're capable of being, uh, some, they're doing something you're capable of achieving but you're not consciously accepting it. You're not acknowledging it fully in your full awareness. What if you're hero or hero-fying? You, you turning somebody into hero was actually you projecting the part of yourself, your capability that you're not living right now onto them. To me, this makes perfect sense because if I think about things that people do that I don't really care about or have no interest in or isn't, uh, isn't something that I'm even in, uh, uh, that I don't desire. There's millions of things that people do that are supposedly amazing. That yeah, it's, that's cool, but it's not very impressive. Like, I don't know, I, a, a year, a couple of years ago, I might have looked at somebody on the gymnastics rings and thought, yeah, big deal. It just looks stupid. They're just like kind of just lame, whatever. Like, no interest, not inspired. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad he's dancing around on the rings, but what the heck? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't inspire me. Whereas now, if I see somebody on gymnastics rings doing an iron cross. I'm like, holy crap, I'm so inspired, I'm so impressed. That dude or that woman uh, on the rings, they're heroes. I don't know, what, do women do an iron, iron cross? I'll have to check that out. But anyway, the, when I see the people now on the, on the gymnastics rings, I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. I'm so impressed, I'm so inspired. But what changed? Did, it, did they change? No, it didn't become more amazing. What happened is I started to become um, more interested in that and it started to become uh, my potential to do that started to become more aware to me. So it's not even just unexpressed potential, it's, it's unexpressed potential that's starting to come to the surface. It's starting to touch on your awareness. Because now I'm interested in the, in the gymnastics rings. Like I do in the CrossFit, I bought my own rings, I do it at home, I do you know, different kinds of exercises on them, and I get how hard it is. And so when I see it, it's contextualized, and my potential to do that is being projected onto these people. And that's what uh, being impressed by something is. Inspire comes from the old Latin root, I think, that means to inhale, to breathe in. And so you're breathing in somebody else's ability to do something through your visual sense. You're breathing it in visually. You're hearing about it. You're breathing it in auditori auditorily. I'm using a lot of stupid words right now. Auditorily. Oh, is that even a word? You're breathing it into you and it's coming inside and it's resonating with a part of you that's true and that's what inspiration is. It's coming in and it's hitting the core of you, the heart of you, the part of you that is that. That's inspiration. And then we say, oh my God, that person's a hero. It's them. And we, and we leave it as them. And we say, that, I couldn't do that. That's that person doing it. And we take all that magical and exciting energy inside us and we give it to them. And we call it them and theirs. And we distance ourselves from it. But that whole feeling of amazingness it's only the resonance of that thing that we breathed in, which on its own is just some lifeless information. It's just inf visual information, auditory information, it's just stuff coming in. It's just, it's, just, it's just electromagnetic information coming in through our eyes. It's just, it's just air pressure waves coming into our ears and it's coming in and boom, inside it explodes into this feeling of energy and we call it inspiration. And then we take that feeling of energy and we describe it to somebody else. But that happened inside you. And it happened inside you because there's a part of you that knows that you can do that. There's a part of you that knows you can create that, that knows you have that capability, and that you also start to have the heart's desire for, right? It's that combination of a little bit of desire, all of a sudden now in the context of gymnastics rings, I have desire, and I see that, and boom, all of a sudden, that's inspirational because me and who I am and who I'm capable of becoming is resonating with that imagery, with that sound. I'm inspired, and I take that, if I'm not careful, and I ascribe it, and I say, that's a hero, and then I, don't, I can't do that. I couldn't do that because that's not me, that's them. But here's where that, that starts to hurt you is by taking it and projecting it unconsciously onto that person. You then distance yourself from it and you don't have any accountability to ever do it because it has nothing to do with you, it's not you, it's them. But it's bullshit. It's only you and you're projecting onto them and you're creating distance to make you not have to be accountable to yourself to create the thing you're capable of creating, to become the person you're capable of becoming. And that's a shame 
So what I would like to suggest is that an awareness that the projections, when you see a hero, that is you. When you're inspired, that's what you're capable of. When you're impressed, that's because you know on some level you can do it. Hold yourself accountable to that feeling. Let that feeling of excitement and magic and impressedness and awe of that thing be a reminder to you that that's because you can do it. You can do it. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to say that having a hero is a bad thing. Having a hero is a good thing. I just would like you to, to try on having a consciousness of what that is and what that means. Now, I'm conscious that I have heroes. I'm conscious that I look at my coach, uh, uh, my coach Rich Litvin, I see him as a hero in the business of coaching. Uh, and, and the way he goes about his business and the way he works and the way he coaches me, it's, it's heroic. And I've actually said to Rich uh, before, I was like, Rich, I love the fact that you share so openly about your life and about who you are and what your challenges are. And at the same time, I don't want to know too much because when I see you as a hero, I like to see you in this really amazing, almost perfect way where like, like they say, don't meet your heroes in real life because then you find out they're not as great as you thought they were. You know, I have a, another client I was talking about recently meeting, uh, seeing a hero in a different context and them falling from grace. And they're not as amazing as she thought they was and so great and I'll, you know, no, no, they're not a hero anymore. Well, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, you know, there is, it's a delusion to think that heroes are perfect. And I'm not saying that I think my coach is, I know he's not, but I like to live inside the delusion that he is, at least at the same time conscious that I know it's a delusion. Right? Not so much that I fall into a trap and think I'm trying to be, I can become that or whatever. It's not about that. It's about, it's about allowing this, this mythical illusion of, the, of a person being something to be uh, a driver for me, to have it get me excited. Oh, if only I could become that perfect thing. Let's pretend, let's play inside that world where that's possible. Let's have heroes and perfect, amazing hero images to, to strive towards and, and let's do that while at the same time, at the end of the day, fully aware that that's not really true. They're not really perfect. It's not even really them. It's me projecting my potential onto them. But that's okay because at the end of the day, I'm not going to get caught up in it so much where I lose myself and I get attached and it's, it becomes a negative, unhealthy thing because I, at the end of the day, I know that it's bullshit. I know that they're not perfect. I know that it's not even them and I know it's a projection of me. But I'm going to put that aside. I'm just going to play this game where there's a hero and they're amazing and oh my God, I wish I could be like them. And so let me get out of bed every day and go to work and do what it is that I can do to become like that, that perfect human being over there. I want to be like them. And at the end of the day, before we go to bed, we say, but actually they're not perfect and it's, they're just like everybody else and it's not even really them, it's me projected onto them. And I'm not going to forget that, but I am going to take the day off from remembering it every day so that I can use that as a tool, as a thing to, to bring me into action towards this, this ever fleeting uh, perfection uh, of a character that's out there because it gets me into action in becoming who it is that I'm capable of becoming. More and more and more of that. Well, I'll never reach perfection, and it's not about them, it's about me. That tool of seeing a hero and calling them a hero and pretending that they are something that they're really not, it drives me. It's like, it's like having a myth, it's having a story, having something to strive for. And this is the middle way in the idea of having a hero, acknowledging that it's a projection of yourself, acknowledging that it's just you're just impressed by and inspired by things that are your own capabilities that are unexpressed. Acknowledging that they're not really perfect, but allowing yourself to pretend that they are anyway and striving to become that. Striving to become who you are capable of becoming. So have heroes. Love them. Worship them. And remember this bullshit at the same time. Much love.